How you doing guys? This is Ryko with another episode of my All-Star Commentary series. Sorry for the lack of videos as of late, I've spent some time playing DMC and Borderlands, and I didn't know if you guys wanted any videos of other games. Unlike these commentary videos where I have time to collect my thoughts and give you something more coherent, other gameplay videos will most likely just be me saying something along the lines of what horse shit over and over and over again. However, if you are interested in seeing some other gameplay videos either with or without commentary, leave a comment below. So yeah, lots of bad news leading to Cat and Emmett's release tomorrow. Superbot was recently let go by Sony, and we got news that the potential Oddworld DLC was cancelled. Not gonna lie, I'm not expecting much out of this game after that news. On one hand, Sony Santa Monica has a good record on providing for the games that they take charge of. I'm not going to ignore that they did good by Twisted Metal and Little Big Planet. While DLC is nice and will entice people to keep the game alive, I'm not too happy with the prospect that 105 could potentially be our last balance patch though. Granted, they might come out with another balance patch in the future, however with God of War Ascension's release date being a mere month away, I highly doubt that they're going to focus any of their attention on All-Stars when God of War is going to actually sell, and it has multiplayer to keep in check as well. Coming back to All-Stars, too many knee-jerk nerfs were made, and the game's fledgling state was met with the removal of options, something I'm generally not a fan of. More importantly, it cemented that Superbot was listening to players that hadn't fully explored their options. The vocal majority is something that should be heated to for a lot of things, but removing character options because players weren't reacting properly to certain situations was a bad move. If Raiden's throat loop was a netcode related problem, then it should have been solved through the netcode. Taking the situation out entirely is not simple, it's just lazy. I'm not going to sit here and play Monday Morning Quarterback. This isn't going to be one of those videos where I talk about where it all went wrong or what I would have done. I won't pretend to know more about the intricacies of the game industry than the people who are actually out there doing the work. For all we know, Sony's main directive to Superbot could have very well been to cater to the average player. We won't ever truly know. All we do know is that Sony says that the game sold about as much as they expected it to. This could very well mean that they expected the game to bomb though, so that doesn't say much. In personal news, I've won a couple of online tournaments recently, the most recent of which was yesterday. In the finals, I faced Dylan's brother, Devin, who happens to be the sly in this video. After winning the first match in winner's finals, I was sent to loser's bracket. Luckily, I assessed my overaggression in the first set and managed to take it in the grand finals without losing a single game. Part of me thinks that a lot of it was luck. In one game, a punch on a well-timed roll kept me from being sodomized by Murray's helping hand. If you're interested in watching the sets, you can find them by clicking the annotation below or in the video description. If you're looking for some more video of my 2v2 gameplay, Minzara from the subreddit has put up some ranked matches where my evil Cole teamed up with his Raiden. I know I said I play Drake more, but I haven't been able to establish a connection with Iggy, so I play Evil Cold more with people that I'm not familiar with. Again, you can click the annotation below or check the description for the playlist. This 2v2 set actually had way more than the three matches that are being featured in this video, so you will be getting more video of 2v2 with me and Iggy versus Dylan and Devin as well. So, we're on game two, and in the first game, I actually showed something off that I think I did against Impact, where I grind off the platform and then immediately turn around and punch to kind of throw people off. A lot of people, since they see the grind, they think that the punch is no longer an option, so they kind of leave themselves open. So both calls actually can make a lot of use out of grinding off of a platform and then getting their aerials out in a very deceptive fashion. I assume that Hat's gravity slide will work the same way, so we'll find that out tomorrow. That's something I'm going to look up immediately. In 2v2, especially with Iggy, since Fat Princess kind of has the safer options on getting in on people, I tend to play the back end of things. Now, in 2v2, you don't necessarily have to have established rules like, oh, plays front, who plays back, there are some cases where it's very obvious, like you're not going to have Radek running in on people, and if there is a Radek out, out there that likes to take point in a 2v2, please, one, show me a video if you do well against good players, and two, stop playing Radek. No, um, <laughs> please leave a comment below or a video response so that I can actually see it in action. But yeah, I play backline when I play with Iggy, mainly because uh, Evil Cole has start. the mobility factor in his favor, so he can kind of sneak in, sneak out, throw punches, and otherwise assist with tethers and grenades, while Fat Princess and her uh, three friends can handle all the dirty work up front. 
Still on Endeavor, probably doing their best to try to keep us out of our comfort zones. I actually throw a level 1. I've been th kind of throwing raw level 1s in general, but I throw one in response to Fat Princess's aerial pressure in hopes that the warrior didn't hit me. Luckily, he didn't, and I managed to catch the kill on Dylan's Fat Princess. Dylan gets the hard knockdown on Iggy, and then sets up the Oki with Chicken. I avoid it for a little bit, but then I roll twice while I'm in the corner, and I die for it, which I should have, because rolling is bad, and I'm stupid doing it. There is something of note that I want to point out. Sly's Teleport. It is really good. It is fantastic, actually. It basically has to be, because it, he doesn't have a roll. It actually lets him get out of Ratchet's level 1 setup, if it's spaced properly. However, it acts as a role in the sense that even if Sly has disappeared right at the beginning of his teleport, if he's already moved out, if you grab the smoke where Sly disappeared from, you can actually just grab Sly straight out of his own teleport. Now this is of particular note because human bullet counts as a grab. So if you actually have really good timing and you know that he's going to teleport, you can actually grab him out of the beginning of his teleport well, with human bullet. Speaking of Fat Princess and her fake friends, it kind of reminds me of that, uh, has anybody ever listened to that Got Rice song? It's, I mean, I think that song's like a, at least a decade old at this point. But there's a line in it that says, uh, one-on-one, -on -one, fuck that, three-on-one, no duels. And when I think of Fat Princess, I immediately think of that line. So, I land the stream Nightmare Blast on Dylan, and then we are treated to about a 10 second barrage of projectiles and fireballs and grenades and all sorts of stuff. And Sly can't do anything. What is he going to do? Throw an alarm clock? Well, yeah, I guess so. But yeah, nothing comes out of that. All of us are obviously trying to scout for that last kill, but my human board does not connect on Dylan while Devin's friend Murray manages to land on Iggy, so there you have it for him, too. Now, I know what you're thinking. The two fat princesses in this match, am I going to touch upon the character in my commentary? Well, I only really have this to say. Her startling unpopularity in the face of the fact that she's currently the blatantly strongest character is funny to me. She has 94 variable kill setups. That's not an exaggeration. 94. If you want to see a number of them, uh, 50 in fact, a player by the name of Mogo, uh, apologies if I mispronounce the name, uh, but he's created a video that displays 50 kill setups in less than 5 minutes. You can find the link in the video description below. After about the 10th cake please, you'll probably want to mute your speakers, but it pretty much says everything that needs to be said about the character. Do I think that she needs a nerf? At this point, I don't know. I mean, empirically, duh, but I have this fear that if I say anything whatsoever, someone at Sony will overhear it and grind the poor chubby lass in the paste. I'm not of the mind that she should be overlooked just because she's unpopular, and her minions have no downside to them, but at the same time, if she's adjusted, it should be done carefully. I actually find it to be a good thing that a wildly unpopular character is downright busted. It's funny to me every time someone describes what they want in a character, like safe moves and good rushdown and strong pressure, and when you reply with, well, you should probably play Fat Princess, they immediately shy away from the suggestion. But yeah, she's busted, and a part of me likes it, that's all I can really say about it. I don't really know how to fight her with anyone but Evil Cole, and even that's not a particularly strong matchup. It amounts to a lot of reads with raw level 1s, so actually it's a terrible matchup where your only saving graces are experience and pattern recognition. So, I get the up throw on Fat Princess and I go for the kill setup, however, I managed to get the level 1 on Sly instead, who did a good job of trying to hit me with a thunder roll. Another point of note, after Evil Cole manages to get the first lift with the human bullet, he can be knocked out of it, but not by any move that's less than 38. So Nightmare Blast, the Exploding Barrel, Thunder Roll, Firebird Strike. There's a weird exception with Kratos' jabs, and then obviously command grabs work as well, you can just kind of yank them out of it. But for the most part, if you hit him with weak moves, moves that hit like 10 or 5, you're not actually going to knock him out of Human Bullet after he gets the first lift.
As always, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or requests, please leave them below. My name is Ryko, and I'll see you next time.